Oh. Uh. Break. Hello and welcome to me do that video plane review thing. And first off, we're looking at the electric plane V2 works amazing tell 1200, 12,000 actually. I can read. And it's by XOX DJS XOX because you know, we don't need pronounceable usernames. All right. So, let's see. It, it ooh, that's that's well, that's not stable, but then again, it's got the engines above the center of mass, so maybe that balances out a bit. Interesting. Little flying wing. How much you want to bet that it flies more based off of these flaps than off of those engines? Then again, since the last time I played KSP with, well, played around with electric planes, uh, that wasn't really... Let me... I'm just gonna turn these off. Turn these off. And I'm gonna try to avoid using those except ooh, when necessary. Which is right now, because this thing just, yeah, that's not, that's not good. That's not good for it. Are we falling straight down? We're falling straight down, aren't we? Yep. Alright, let's try that again. Yes, so this plane requires the flaps in order to function. Let's see how we're doing for resources. It's consuming xenon gas and generating no electricity. Well, it's using it at the same rate it's generating it, so it's working out the way it's supposed to. And I guess I'm just going to let it gently take off on its own. I assume I can fly it around, but I also assume that it will just, you know, pull up on its own to its own eventual demise, like it's doing right now. It also has no vertical stabilizers, which is not good. Although the wings are slightly angled out, up, so that can help. However, generally, I'd say not, not the best, especially considering what it's doing right this moment. And also, the way the solar panels are clipping, like, they're just... It looks like a vibrating mass of solar panels. So let's watch it crash. Beautiful. At least we didn't take out the runway. That would have kind of sucked. And now for the I don't know what I tried to make ship by Clan Crimson Scorpion, according to the email address. But, you know... Because I, I forgot to tell him to, you know, specify a name for himself or else, you know, he'd get that name. And I have to wonder, I have to think that this plane was made in point twenty four or something. Because if you look at the parts, the placement of the parts, that's kind of not quite right for the new parts. So, we shall see. And it has vernier engines for some reason. And apparently it doesn't like to go in anything other than a straight line. I also notice a distinct lack of control surfaces, so that'll be interesting. And here we are. The tail is not quite correct connected, it looks like, because you can look when you... Oh yeah, it uses the engine, I guess, to uh, move around. I didn't look at the center of everything before flying it. Oh well, we shall see how well this goes badly. You know, if it'll ever take off, that is. Oh, 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 ah, ooh. Hmm, that did not go well. This time I'm looking to see that the center of lift is indeed in front of the center of mass, but the rear wheels are so far back that you can't really lift off. And to be fair, I was moving around on the runway and that possibly caused that crash. So let's try this again without the horribleness that I did before. Okay, same thing as before, hit T, accelerate. Only this time I'm not touching any buttons so that I don't give it, you know, side slip and eventual, you know, turn down slightly and then crash horribly like I did last time. So hopefully this time it will take off, you know, at the end of the runway when it falls off the edge. I'll actually go ahead and pull up right now. <laughs> I shouldn't have pulled up. However, that didn't go too bad. I mean, you know, considering. So a lesson for you plane designers since both of these planes have the exact same problem. The center of lift should not go in front of the center of mass. The center of lift should go slightly behind the center of mass in order to get stab 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 stability. I can speak well. Another lesson for you is your landing gear, your rear landing gear or your main landing gear in the case of, you know, if you have one landing gear in the back and two up front, 
wherever your main landing gear are, they should be just behind the center of mass, or I guess in a tail dragger, just in front of the center of mass, because basically, they're your main landing gear, and they need to be right under the center of mass, because that's where the main force of the weight is, which, you know, doesn't, eh, it kind of makes sense, kind of not too important with KSP, but the thing is, it's important when you when you go to take off because you can't actually pull up off the runway without those landing gear being relatively close to the center of mass because you need it's kind of like a pivot it's a pivot point you know and if it's close to the center of the mass you can pivot on that point because it's right on the center of mass where if whereas if it's not then it's a lot harder to pivot on and um while I've been saying that I've been flying this thing around in circles and because there, there's no way this thing's going to land and survive a landing. I mean, it just pulls up constantly because that center of lift problem. And so I've just been kind of turning slowly to try and, you know, keep it from dying. And that's another thing. Um, control surfaces are your friend. This thing has one control surface, and that's on the stabilizer. And you can see how I can turn it around like this. See, that's because I have a control surface. Now, if I try to rotate it, it rotated really fast just then, but that's because the aerodynamics told it to, not because I told it to. Now, I'm actually trying to rotate, and you can see it's rotating very, very slowly. And if I try to pull up, it pulls up very, very little. And that's because the only way this thing can actually pull up or rotate is because of the reaction wheel in here. And you notice the moment I turn that off, we kind of lose all control. Because the only thing I can do to control this thing now is that little control surface on the yaw. And of course I can turn on the vernier engines, and that gives us more control, but then... I don't even know what we're doing now. Hold on. Well, you know what, with these we might actually be able to survive a landing. So, let's go ahead and try that. Why not? Actually, no, let's not, because look at how bad this is going. Then again, maybe. Maybe. We're just like falling. Just flat. This is great. Oop, nope, nope. It's pulling up too much. Let's try turning down the throttle. Did I run out of fuel for the verniers? Oh no, I didn't. They're just not helping very much. Come on, come on. Lose your speed. Let's go ahead and put the landing gear out right now. Right now, we're just trying to get it down, which we might actually be able to do. We might. I don't know. It's going to be tricky. We are running out of, of uh, oxidizer really fast, and now it's dropping. Now it's dropping way too much, and now it's lifting way too much. Yeah, I, I doubt we're going to make it, but I'm going to try. All right. Flare. Are we landing on a mountain? We're practically falling onto the mountain now. Ooh! Yep. That was possible, just very unlikely. And now for the Science Jet 1 by Peanuts R. Yum, which has a ton of action groups that I have to look up, such as the stationary legs. Oh, it has, it has like landing legs to hold it stationary? What? Bay doors and bay lights, ladders, spelled incorrectly, it's it's with two D's, man. Uh, toggle and open the science equipment, log science data, toggle antennas, reset science experiment equipment and delete data. Drop site checkpoint beacon. What? I'm gonna have to try one, two, three, five. One, two, three, five, eight to ten. Yeah. Alright, so since I'm gonna experiment around with this before I fly it, let's see, I hit the brakes. I just decoupled something. There's the main engines, now they're off. Two, turns on these. Three, I don't remember what three does, but I did it. Five, toggles antenna. Ah, there they are, antenna. One on the back, sticking out the back like that, and one up top. Then eight is the ladder, or ladders. It said ladders. Oh, see, there's one coming out of the cargo bay too. Nine, turns on the lights in the cargo bay and opens them up so we can see that we got some crew capability in here and we've got some landing legs on the top for some reason 
curious what those are supposed to do. And what is that? Oh, that's that's one of the lights. Interesting. And there's also the second cargo bay thing upside down, which is... I, I like this design, actually. This sort of half of it's above and half of it's below. Ah, here's this thing that we decoupled earlier. I'm guessing that was the beacon that it was talking about dropping. I don't know why, but, you know, we can do that. It's kind of cool, you know. Leave it to your imagination, of course, but, you know. And zero. Ah. Ah, that's what those landing gear are for. See, that's what I was talking about. So we actually have landing gear that we can place to just turn this into a stationary science outpost, which is pretty cool. And after we're done with that, it's time to activate the main engines. And, oh yes, we're already throttled up because that's how the game do now. And take off with the science jets. Which, I like the design of it. If nothing else, it looks pretty. I'm not so sure about the landing gear inside the bays, the placement in there, but, you know, I think overall it's very nice. I especially like the double landing gear design you got here, because that's pretty cool looking. Let's see how well this thing performs. Flies pretty nice. Flies pretty fast, too. Although, how much fuel does it have? Is it just this tank? Let's see. That's a cargo bay. That's a cargo bay. That's a crew bay. That's a captain bay. Yeah, I'm going to call it that, a captain bay. Yeah, so it looks like our only fuel source is here. No, it's not. Okay, something else. Oh, yeah, these have fuel in it, don't they? Yes, they do. I forgot that these have fuel in them. So, yeah, it doesn't have much fuel in it, and I'd say that's that's the only downside I see of this thing so far, is that it doesn't have a lot of fuel. And I don't know how far you can actually get with this thing. Maybe I'm burning through it way too fast. Also, um, this looks like it's... Well, I don't know how high altitude it's intended to go, but for high altitude, those other engines work better than these. And so if you want to make this into a high altitude, long range craft, you're better off with those. Also, I imagine it would be more fuel efficient if I didn't throttle up all the way. But I'm not sure about that. Ooh, look at the intake placement. Hold on, let me do a barrel roll. Actually, that was an aileron roll. I like the intake placement. And yeah, that's definitely designed for high altitude with the number of intakes on here. Let's go ahead and take it for landing. You know, at the island runway. Let's see how well it performs with low thrust coming down like this. I'm beginning to think that this is a bad idea, especially because I'm not very experienced with this plane trying to come down this way this quickly. Oh yes, this is an avionics package. I forgot that they uh, changed that to an avionics package. You ran an atmosphere anal an an analysis, recording various measurements like temperature, pressure, and atmosphere composition. And I don't particularly care, because this is a sandbox. I just noticed something. We have these. Oh, these are just for roll. These are just for pitch, and I'm guessing this one is just for yaw. That's another thing. Since KSP 0.20-something, or was it before the 20s, I forget, you've been able to specify which control surfaces do what. And so that can make it very useful to make things more controllable and also make it so like when you roll, it doesn't activate your yaw, which is very useful, very cool. And I guess we're going to test this thing's yaw capability in a moment, because I'm going to yaw to the right to get lined up for the runway. I'm drifting in a plane. I'm drifting in a plane. Oh, we've yawed. We've gone past the runway now. So we got to come back around this way. And I think I'm flying a little low. Eh, not that low. Should probably put the gear down at this point. Activate the brakes. In preparation. Because this is a short runway. I mean, that that is what it is. And I'm going to cut the engines now. And kind of a rough touchdown, but that's my fault, really. Not the plane. And there we go.